everything. All right, guys, welcome to episode two of Ask a Dev. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be covering quite a few cool little topics. I'm eager to get started. We're going to have one of our uh, questions that was asked by one of the subscribers, answered by Quincy Larson from when I interviewed him. That'll be the final question of the interview. It is a very good question, in my opinion. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump right in. Bishop Shaw says, how long did it take you to finally get the hang of JavaScript? Which parts were the hardest for you? And what was your first project you first created with JavaScript? So this is the kind of general question is, is there kind of a time period at which point, um, how long does it take you to get the hang of uh, your first language or first JavaScript? And what parts were hard for me specifically? Um, uh, probably the same ones that were hard for you. Uh, I'm a little bit different just because I, I started doing JavaScript only through um, online websites. So I, I had previous programming experience, so I picked it up pretty quick. Although I would say it took me probably about a year before I felt comfortable enough with JavaScript that I could really dive into it. Up until recently, uh, now that I'm uh, working, doing it full time, I would say you could probably feel comfortable with JavaScript once you feel all right enough to jump into a new framework or a new library like um, Angular is a great example and jQuery, React. If you can kind of jump into those with relative ease, you're probably doing pretty well with how how much JavaScript you know, and um, once you're able to kind of take that knowledge and then implement libraries and things like that. The first project I ever did was a free code camp project. I believe it was the um, random quote generator. So that was the first uh, JavaScript project I did. In all honesty, all my JavaScript projects have been from free code camp, excluding the ones that I, I do at work. So that's, uh, that it's, it is what it is. I, 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 any, any side projects, I guess, would be my, my website, just because I used uh, AngularJS to build that. Um, but that's basically my, how, how, it took me about a year to get comfortable, because now I'm using, I can probably pick up a framework in a weekend or two and be all right. So that would be my answer to that. Ahmed uh, Abohe, apologize if I am mispronouncing uh, that, is uh, asking, uh, I'm guessing English is his first language, so I'll, I'll kind of roughly ask, is it better to implement? Is it better to learn with free code camp tutorials, or trial and error, and like you kind of start your own your own projects? What's more useful? To me, you should do both, right? So you should have these online resources that are going to teach you the basics. They're going to teach you how to get started, and then you should also uh, take that knowledge and then start side projects. So it's one. It's not that one's better than the other. It's just one kind of leads you to the other, and. How are you ever going to build your own application if you never build smaller applications through guides along the way? Or maybe it'd be a book, or maybe it'd be a video, or, or maybe you know something else. I personally learned Angular from watching um, like three hours or four videos of uh, Derek Bonas' Angular course, and that was enough for me. That that watching those was enough so that I could go and build my 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 website, Coding Tutorials uh, 360.com, and so. It's, it's not that one's better than the other, it's you should do both in reality, and they both serve different purposes. I hope that's not a very political answer. I always try to be very clear cut, but um, also just do what works, works best for you. This is a question I get quite a bit, and I'm not quite sure how to answer it. So we're, as always, I don't do a lot of prep, so we'll see what I, I come up with right now. Now, um, how do you make the switch from coding online, such as free code camp, to writing your own code? Like when can you make that switch and how do you know? At what point in free code camp uh, would you say you're ready to make that leap? So the, the, easy, the easy part of that is when are you ready to work as a developer and make the leap? That part is when you can actually build your own applications, when you can actually do your own, whether it be web development. So web development is obviously what the bulk of my channel is in. If you can build your own web application, you're probably ready to make the leap, right? Um, if you can pick up various frameworks and libraries, you're probably ready to make the leap. Now, if you look at a blank text editor, and I, and you know, the, the, maybe we'll just give a free code camp example. It was, hey, I want you to um, build a Wikipedia API project, and you don't know how to get started. You don't know that you need to break it up into this little piece, this little piece, and this little piece just to get going. You're probably not ready. So, um, I. It's really how can you turn you know the, the caffeine into code basically? Can you take this like right now? I'm drinking uh, I'm drinking um, a little bit of um, pink lemonade monster, right? 
at the end of this, do you have something on the screen? And uh, if you're like still struggling with that, which is fine, everyone does. I was at a coding meetup last night and a um, gentleman who's partaking in the um, coding bootcamp, he was struggling a little bit and that's fine. But, um, you know, it's all about, so he would not be ready to be a developer because he, he's still having trouble visualizing the code is something I'm always talking right about. You need to be able to see where you want to go and what connects to what. And if, if you're still at the point where you can't break down a problem and know how to get started, I'm not saying you're not going to run into roadblocks because you run into roadblocks and in coding for the rest of your life. What I am saying is that you'll know how to solve those roadblocks then you're definitely not ready. So once you feel like um, you can problem solve your way out of a problem very well, and you're not gonna have a blank text editor an hour later, when you have a, an assignment or a project or whatever it may be, a, you know, a feature, you're probably ready. But if not, it's gonna be a little bit rough for you. He's a, he was, um, as a, someone who with no web development, like no official web development experience, uh, do you think it's better to have small like a bunch of small single page applications or one large like project that's much more in depth when it comes to like putting it on your portfolio in order to get like an internship or in order to get a junior dev role right i would say um i would say the one big one but but the thing you need to realize about the small projects is they prepare you to build the one big one um you know the, the small projects it doesn't hurt to have a portfolio that has a dozen uh, code pen like apps or a dozen simple like hyperdev apps hyperdev is very cool uh, I don't know if 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 you've heard about it Dylan or if, if your mm -hmm. uh, subscribers have heard about it but hyperdev is basically like code pen so if you have a full node.js environment so you can do full stack apps right nice. in the browser and and whenever you do something it's live immediately and it'll stay live it doesn't get uh, it doesn't get taken down after some period of time and uh, it's totally free. You don't even need an account, actually. It's by the, the team that built Trello. Oh, cool. So we're um, using that as part of our back-end curriculum. But, but what I was saying is, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but you should build some large product, like a full uh, web application that a lot of people are using. The, the number one thing that I think people look for when they're, when they're trying to evaluate a project is, is how many stars does it have on GitHub. I know that sounds kind of weird because it's like a big popularity contest, but um, if somebody sends me like uh, their, their repo and it only has like three or four stars on it um, and they're asking me to like write about it or, or check it out or something, then my immediate reaction is you haven't done very much groundwork in terms of getting people to actually use it and su you know, supporting it and doing all these other things that are necessary to actually emulate a real world, you know, project, because mm. because the real world uh, is not like a hackathon. A hackathon, you build a project very quickly, you demo it, and you're done, and the project just decays rapidly from there, right? Like all the dependencies go out of date, and you probably don't ever touch it again. Nobody uses it. In the real world, you create something, and you have to continue supporting it. So it could be like a an npm module. You're going in and making tweaks. People are opening issues. You're responding to them. Like that's much more like real world work than busting out a quick hackathon project. Um, so I would say one thing I would do is get involved with an organization like Free Code Camp, where you'll actually be maintaining large open source projects or contribute to existing open source projects. Um, if you have pull requests that have been accepted into Firefox's core browser or Linux's kernel or something like that, that is way more impressive than any. Uh, casual app that you can throw together. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Ask a Dev, episode two. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section below so we can have some content for Ask a Dev, episode three, and we can answer the questions that other young developers and start developers starting to learn to code can get answers to. I want to thank Quincy Larson for answering uh, this question. Make sure to go to medium.freecodecamp.com if you liked his answer and you want to see more of his blogs. Very, very great stuff. I, I get an email and I read probably one in 10 that apply to me, but every time I read it, I absolutely am astounded with how much detail he's gone into. And it's very, very good. I encourage everyone to read it as well. But um, yeah, so make sure to ask your questions in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, special thanks to you supporting me on Patreon. It's going above and beyond, and it's really appreciated. So thank you to those people. 
as always, I will see you in the next video, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front-end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing, so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.